anarchism, a revolutionary idea of an authority-free and hierarchical society, a truly free society. The very idea which is the enemy of pretty much all authority. Well, what is authority though? Throughout the series we've talked about authority a lot, we've named it here and there because it's such a crucial part of anarchist philosophy, yet we haven't really looked into what it is. So let's do that. So let's begin with differentiating two forms of authority from the get-go. There is internal authority, which we're going to get into later, and external authority, which we're going to get into now. So let's actually start talking about external authority. Well, in external authority there are, once again, two forms of external authority. Those being fixed or constant authority and temporary or voluntary authority. So let's actually begin to explain one of them. Well, we can start with fixed authority because that is what we're most used to when we speak of authority, it's the authority that we usually think about. You know, the state, the capitalist, the bourgeois, uh, school teachers, all of this. Fixed authority that stays constant, it keeps dominating. Now, we could even take and read a quote from Kropotkin to get even clearer ideas and examples of what I mean with fixed authority. So let's, let's do that. We're so perverted by an education which from infancy seeks to kill us in the spirit of revolt and to develop that of submission to authority. We're so perverted by this existence and the rule of a law which regulates every event in life, or birth, or education, or development, or love, or friendship, that if this state of things continues, we shall lose all initiative, all habits of thinking for ourselves. Our society seems no longer able to understand that it is possible to exist otherwise than under the reign of law, elaborated by a representative government and administrated by a handful of rulers. And even when it has gone so far as to emancipate itself from the thraldom, its first care had been to reconstitute it immediately. The year one of liberty has never lasted more than a day, for after proclaiming it, men put them the very next morning under the yoke of law and authority. Indeed, for some thousands of years, those who govern us have done nothing but bring changes upon respect for the law, obedience to authority. This is the moral atmosphere in which parents bring up their children, and school only serves to confirm the impression. Cleverly assorted scrap of experience science are inculcated upon the children to prove necessity of law. Obedience to the law is made a religion. Moral goodness and love of the master are fused into one and the same divinity. The historical hero of the schoolroom it's the man who obeys the law and defends it against the rebels. P. Kropotkin. So, constant authority is the authority which forces its own existence to keep being there. It forces it to keep existing and keeps being an authority. As I said, many good examples would be the state, a lot of parents, the education system, the capitalist dogma of a fucked up system and it's taught from us from birth we're taught to respect elders taught to respect their authority and listen to them even if we don't agree with them and we're just expected to obey this authority all the time and i also say no i'm not going to obey this authority are deemed as villainous or seen as mindless rebels who just want chaos see a pattern here See, where this idiotic claim that anarchism is chaos comes from? Well, now you know. So, now when we have the fundamental idea of what constant authority is, the foundation of it, let's take a look at, well, voluntary authority. 
we should call it that. Does it follow that I respect all the 40? For me, such a thought, in the matter of boots, I reap it a 40 of the bootmaker. Concerning houses, canals, or railroads, I console that of the architect or engineer. For such or such special knowledge, I apply to such and such a servant. But I allow neither the boot bootmaker, nor the architect, nor the servant to impose his authority upon me. I listen to them freely, and with all the respect merited by their intelligence, their character, their knowledge, reserving always my inconstable right of criticism and censor, I do not constant myself in consulting a single authority in any specific branch. I consult several. I compare their opinion and choose that which seems to me to the soundest. But I recognize no infallible authority, even in special questions. Consequently, whatever respect they may have for the honesty and severity of such or such an individual, I have no absolute faith in any person. Such a faith would be fatal to my reason, so to my liberty, and even to the success of my undertakings. It would immediately transform me into a stupid slayer, an instrument of the will and interests of others. I bow therefore to the authority of special men because it is imposed upon me by my own reason. I am conscious of my inability to grasp in all its detail and positive developments any very large portion of human knowledge. The greatest intelligence would not be equal to a comprehension of the whole. Thence results, for science as well as for industry, the necessity of the division and association of labour I receive and I give such as human life. Each directs and each is directed in his turn. Therefore, there is no fixed and constant authority, but a continual exchange of mutual, temporary, and above all, voluntary authority and subordination. Mikhail Bakunin. I really couldn't put it any better what is meant with voluntary or temporary authority. I think Bakunin just explains it extremely well. So, in case you're not used to all <laughs> language, old English. Let me try to explain it. Voluntary or temporary authority is the authority that you choose to take and impose by yourself. And it is never constant. It will end in a short matter of time. It will not be forever or in a long period of time. It's not realistic to expect that everyone would know absolutely everything. I know absolutely nothing of building houses. I know nothing about that. I wouldn't dare to start building my own house. That'd be fucking chaos. So instead, I'd go and ask people who are actually knowledge about building houses, architects. And I'd take what they say. I'd have my fair deal of just my own thinking. I think what I th I take what I think it sounds the soundest, what sounds most fair, what sounds more logical, and I try to implement that. But I would never simply just obey and just listen to them mindlessly, as that would make me nothing less than a mindless slave. Now, with modern technology, we're not even limited to our local area. We can actually ask people of professions and certain knowledge all across the globe. So that makes it so much easier to just get more opinions and take even more of what sounds soundest and what doesn't sound logical at all. Just take what sounds best. Some anarchists actually don't read it. It is as authority as it is an imposed upon you. It's not constant. It is very voluntary. It is mutualistic. So is it really an authority? Well, that is still a matter of debate frankly. I personally say it's not really an authority either, I'm just having it in the video because some anarchists like Mikhail Bakun in the pretty big one in his works um, refers to it as an authority. So I think it's just fair to actually have it in here. I mean a usual definition of authority would be the power to enforce law, uh, exact obedience, command, determine or judge. And if this is the definition of authority, then certainly what we just explained is not authority at all. 
Instead, it would be just mutualistic behavior. Taking others' knowledge and experience and trying to implement it yourself. Learning from others' mistakes. No internal authority. What the hell is internal authority? Well, let's talk about it. Not all authority comes from different possessions, from the outside world. Some comes from the inside. You can have internal authorities. Internal internal limitations and that is exactly what we're going to talk about and once again I will read it to Bakunin I can't really put it any better than he did so let's do a quote what is internal authority is it the inevitable power of the natural law which manifests themselves in the necessity concent concentration and succession of phenomena in the physical and social worlds indeed against these laws revolt is not only forbidden it is even impossible we may misunderstand them, or not know them at all, but we cannot disobey them, because they constitute the basis and fundamental conditions of our existence. They envelop us, penetrate us, regulate all our movements, thoughts and acts, even when we believe that we disobey them, we only show their omnipotence. Yes, we are absolutely the slaves of these laws, but in such a slavery there is no human nation. Or rather, it is not slavery at all. For slavery is supposed an external master, a legislator outside of him who he commands. While these laws are not outside of us, they are inherited in us. They constitute our being, our whole being, physically, intellectually and morally. We live, we breathe, we act, we think, we wish, only through these laws. Without them, we are nothing. We are not. Mikhail Bakunin so, how can we describe or define internal authority in a more modern and short, <laughs> shorter way? Well, I've done some thinking, so I didn't find anything that others have written about it. So, I did some thinking and this will be my own definition that I came up with. Although it is important to remember that internal authority comes in many different shapes and forms, so, altogether, it is very important that it's broad. So let's give it a go. The restrictions of our intelligence, biology, physiology and ethics from our inner self. These restrictions and laws are but fully natural and fundamentally impossible to break. A big example of them would be ethics. You will always have some fundamental core of ethics. And well, sure, you could try to break your ethics and go by a double moral, that is possible, but you can't change your ethics. Not really, not a core of it. You can change some parts of it. Like, for example, I didn't think that private property is real, while others thought it, think it. And I mean, I used to think that private property was fair until I realized it's nothing but theft. But I never liked theft. You see, I never liked theft. Would I say it's theft to steal from a big sheen market? No, because they steal from their employers all the fucking time. They steal from the workers who work there in the form of surplus value or profit. So is it theft? What are you not? Letters would argue it is theft. So, but we both argue that theft is wrong. Say a fundamental core of the ethics, theft is wrong, murder is wrong. Now some people like to make exceptions and define murder and theft differently, but we all agree that murder and theft are wrong. That is a fundamental natural law. But as I said, these restrictions are all natural. Just as restrictions comes in different way, so do we, we come in different ways. And life is always restricted to something. We're restricted to something. We're restricted to our bodily capacities. I can't like, carry a shit ton of weight. Others can, because they've worked on it, but I can't, I'm restricted to it. Sure. Well, to end it on a more philosophical matter, to be is to be restricted. But to be restricted is not to be. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know that the end become a little bit ranty. 
I don't know if I fixed that in the editing, but as of recording, I became a bit ranty. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Have a lovely day. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and if you have the money to spare and think that we deserve it, well, we could a Patreon. So I'm just leaving that in the description, as always. As well as the sources of this video, there's always sources in the descriptions, unless I've stated otherwise. Well, have a lovely day. Bye.